I bet. I bet. Do a couple of you guys want it? Uh, literally, we'll just grab hold, bring the casket to the end of the church truck here. It's on rollers, so it's not going to be too difficult. Got to lift a little bit. Yeah. Stop. Wonderful. I think that's really good. Perfect. Stanley, if you would just like to follow in the oh, excuse me. <laughs> Hold up your Amber? I think there's plenty of room uh, for you folks to be seated. Of course, we want David to sit here in the front, but if you would like to have a seat, please feel free. If you want to be seated, the immediate family, please have a seat. Yeah, we got it. Um, just to share that, uh, we have been given 20 minutes to have our service. So, as I said, our time has begun once we arrived. But we're gathered here today to give thanks for the life of Doris Christi Christine Abbott, who shared her life with us and went home to be with the Lord. It is in her memory that we're gathered for her life that we are so thankful for. Our loving, eternal, heavenly Father, as we meet this morning to remember our precious mother and friend, Doris Abbott, we ask you to be to us the God of all comfort and the God of all grace. Give us your point of view as we face the reality of death, to grow in our view the truths of this life. We ask this now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'd ask Dr. Hill if she would come and read the scripture. I send love and condolences to the family, and so we thank God for this excellent celebration. Mrs. Abbott, I'm going to be reading the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guided me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I feel no evil, but thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. And at this time, um, Amber Copeland will come with a, a song, and then yes. follow me, she will have the obituary.
today. It's a celestial day and it's a celestial morning. And uh, I remember when I woke up this morning, looked out the window, I said, "Oh, praise God! Look at the sun shining. Amen. It's awesome." Uh, at this time, I'd like to provide an opportunity for anyone that's here would like to have any words of expression uh, about your relationship with um, Sister Doris. <laughs> Well, I'm not even sure even what to say. She was a, a loving mother. She was a, a wonderful uh, wife to Billy, and uh, she did everything you know that she could for her family. And we know. But we have hope that she's in a better place, but we know. Bluetooth disconnected. But at the same time, we still, you know, grieve for the fact that, that she's no longer with us to share her life with us. But I believe that she's looking down on us. She's saying, you know what? And she's. You know, and so for us, it's important that we continue our lives, continue what we do, because that's what she would have wanted. You know, for us to do what she could to honor, honor her life, honor uh, my dad's life, and to honor, honor the Lord. Mm -hmm. I just want to see greetings from you from the Holy Grounds Church at Turlock in Dale High. And I'm grateful that I had an opportunity to meet her. Um, I find her to be a lady of beauty. She was an Avon seller. She loved to uh, help an hour and give it to the community. And Avon is something that I love, and that's something that she did. And so we were blessed as the Holy Ground Ministry had an opportunity to, to really meet this beautiful person. So we will be praying for the family. And we know that um, Dave has been an awesome son. He was just faithful to her, and so, mm. We're grateful for that. So on behalf of the Holy Grounds Ministry, we send our love and greetings to the family. I know, John, you wanted to? No, um, she already knows why. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So whenever you're ready. I hope Abbott was born on January 14, 1946, to Alice Stewart and Clarence Nicholson in Chillicothe, Ohio, but was raised all around the Midwest. Doris was known by some as Dottie and others as the Avon Lady. She was called home by God on November 19, 2021, at Mercy Medical Center in Merced. Doris was a loving person, very caring, and was loved by many people. She worked in a variety of caring occupations, such as caregiving, babysitting, paraeducator slash school staff. She was also a wonderful wife and mother. Her hobbies included crossword puzzles, adult coloring, reading, and embroidery. She also enjoyed selling Avon and interacting with her customers, many of whom were like family to her. Her family and all who knew her loved and will miss her dearly. She was preceded in death by her dad, Clarence Nicholson, her first husband, David Henson, her niece, Shanna Henson, her brother, Frederick Nicholson, her mother, Alice Stewart, her son, Jim Abbott, and her second husband, Billy Abbott. Surviving are her children, Nancy Henson, David Abbott, John Abbott, and Dahlia Cooley. Also her sister, Elsie Hughes. In addition, she is survived by numerous grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and her nephew. Doris's visitation and viewing will be held at Winton Family Funeral Service on Thursday, December 9th from 5 to 7 p.m. Her graveside service is today, Friday, December 10th at 11.30 a.m. at the San Joaquin Valley National Cemetery. And her memorial celebration of life service will be held at First Baptist Church in Merced on Saturday, January 15th at 10 a.m. A life well lived. Amen. I'm grateful for how the Lord has, as I said earlier, when I think about the sunshine 
I think about how sometimes we go through life and it has its storms, it has its valleys, it has its days, and then there are times it breaks. Amen. And life gives us, amen, that moment of grace. And that's what happens in life. As we go through this life, God understands the storms of life. He understands the challenges all of us face. But he made it possible that at the end of this life, there is the hope of eternal life. There is life, amen, beyond this world. Where the sun, amen, is shining because of the presence of our Father God and because of his son, Jesus Christ. There's a verse of scripture in the book of um, St. John. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And that's why Christ came, that beyond this life, that there would be no question of where we go after death, right. that we would go to be with him, with his heavenly mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. We would be in eternal life. Mm -hmm. And the scripture continues to say, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 38, it says, We believe there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Have a living faith, a living hope. And we know that in everything, God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything of all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And what wonderful promises that the Lord has given us. And I am certainly even in your own heart, on this day, and, and I know you're missing Sister Abbott. I know you're missing Doris, and that's a part of this life. But we're grateful to the Lord Jesus Christ because he has given us a hope that her faith was in him. Yes. And as she lived, she lived her life well, but she knew that beyond this life, amen, she was living also for eternity. Death closes the door to this life. Death, sorrow, and tears are as real as life itself. Death is the close of our earthly life, and the Bible likens death to a vapor. In James chapter 4, verse 14, it says, And yet you cannot tell what shall be tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even as a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and afterward it vanisheth away. And with such the short time that we have in this life, we have an opportunity to love. We have an opportunity to live. We have an opportunity to grow. We have an opportunity to share us. We have an opportunity to fellowship because our life is so short and he's given us that time, amen, to enjoy the beauty of it in all of its shadows and sometime in all of its stormy times. But it's just like a vapor, such a short time. Also, he says that death is like a flower. In the book of Job, chapter 14 and 2, it says, We blossom like a flower and then wither. Like a passing shadow, we quickly disappear. Mm -hmm. And how beautiful is, how, how many of you have enjoyed flowers? Mm -hmm. Valentine's is coming up in 2022 and special occasions. I mean, we get flowers as, as a sentiment or an expression of our love, an expression of our heart. Amen, to those that we love or those that we care about or those that we want to honor. And it says, just like a flower, our life is here and we're able to cherish one another. We're able to appreciate one another. And we're able to give each other that, that the benefit of our fragrance and of our life and of our colorfulness. Have you been around someone that made you laugh, made you smile, made you feel good, <laughs> gave you that awe moment? That's, that's what Doris gave to each and every one of us. That's what she gave to you and so many others. As I've heard so many wonderful stories about um, um, selling Avon and, and, and reaching out in the community. How many lives she touched, how many lives that, made, uh, that she made smile. Amen. And our life is like a vapor. It's like a flower. You know, we don't have, we don't have time to waste. And we redeem every moment. We redeem every second. Every day beyond today, the legacy of, of, 
of Doris would want you to be a flower, you know, bloom, blossom, have a fragrance of life, have a fragrance of joy. That's what she, the legacy that she has left. And it also says it's like a blade of grass. Now the book of First Peter, um, chapter 1, verse 24, says, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth away. And so in this time that you and I have, amen, let us take life that he has given us. Either life is going to live you or you're going to live life. And if we choose to go along with, with the shadows that come, with the storms that come, it can make our life miserable. But let me tell you, there's always a silver lining in the cloud. There's always a silver lining through the storm. It's going to end. And we can live through the storm. I remember when my wife and I, we were flying to Jacksonville, Florida, and we were going through, the, we were going through a storm, and the, and the pilot came on and tell us to buckle up, stay in your seats. We're flying through a storm. And that plane began to rattle and creak and shake. And if you've ever been in a plane in a storm, amen, and it, were, it, it, it would bobble and it, it would rise and fall, I was, I was just sitting there thinking, okay, God, well, I'm trusting the pilot that's flying the plane. I'm trusting the mechanics that worked on the airplane. And I'm trusting the engineers that put the plane together. It wouldn't be in the air if it couldn't fly. Amen? Amen. And as I began to, to think about that, and we were going through the storm, I mean, the lightning was flashing. You can see the rain beat against the window. And, but you know what? We didn't make an emergency landing. We didn't fly up above the storm. And I said, oh my God, we're just flying right through the storm. And sometimes life is like that. We go through the storms of life. But God had made this body, amen, able to withstand storms, able to withstand the pressures of life, the uncertainties of life. Because he knows that beyond this life, amen, there is eternity. There is eternal life. And so I want to encourage you to get to today that Death on this end closes our life here, but the door opens to eternity, amen, where each and every one of us has the blessing, the privilege, and opportunity that God has given us. And the scripture says, Rarely, rarely I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Death closes one door, but it also opens another. God has prepared a place for us. That's why the beautiful scripture that's um, so often quoted and read in many languages throughout the world, how God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not what perish, but have everlasting life. The scripture goes on to say, for God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but through Jesus Christ we would all have the hope Amen, of eternal life. And that came through the Father God because of his love. And that came through the Son of God because of his love. And that's why you and I are able to celebrate and rejoice in the life of, of Doris Abbott and the life that we now have dwelling on the inside of us. So I want to encourage you, family. We're going to miss Doris. But she left a legacy of love. She left a legacy of life. It doesn't end with you. It continues through you. He meant to, uh, to, to touch others. So our Father in heaven, inasmuch as you and your sovereign love have called the soul of our loved one, Doris Christine Abbott, to be with you, we express our thanks for the privilege of knowing her in this life. We thank you for the way she impacted our lives and others and for your grace even through her difficult times. You were there. We are grateful for your love. You, who sent us the great shepherd of the sheep, your son, Jesus Christ. You who have prepared a place for all who trust in you. And you alone are worthy of our faith. And you we turn to for continued strength, for continued comfort and a continued perspective and continued purpose. I'm so sorry. Are you done? I'm so sorry. Just I want to interrupt you. 
So it's what we are going to be doing. The gentleman from the cemetery will be coming and taking Mrs. Abbott's casket at this time. If you wish to observe the committal, I do recommend that you make your way to your cars. This road right behind us here, it wraps around the back side of the hill and you can go up on the top of the hill where the flag is and observe the committal from up there. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. At this time. Okay. And of course, don't forget. Yeah. Speaker. Yeah.